Hello everyone, Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today Molecular Biology topic on Animal Cell Culture But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So our topic includes What is Animal Cell Culture? Which includes Primary Cell Culture and Secondary Cell Culture what is cell line and types of cell lines? Few common examples of cell lines. Procedure or protocols of animal cell culture. Applications of animal cell culture. Its advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the introduction of animal cell culture. Animal cells are artificially cultivated in a hospitable environment as part of a biotechnological approach called animal cell culture. Typically, Multicellular eukaryotes and their established cell lines provide the cells needed for animal cell culture. Animal cell culture is a popular and commonly used method for isolating cells and culturing them in a sterile environments. This method was first created as a lab procedure for specific investigations but it has now been modified to keep living cell lines isolated from their original source. Creation of fundamental tissue culture medium which allows a range of cells to function under various circumstances is what led to the development of animal cell culture techniques. The identification of various cell activities and methods of action have been aided by in vitro growth of isolated cells from various species. The most common uses of animal cell culture are in the fields of gene therapy, vaccine production and cancer research. Animal cells are more difficult to develop on artificial medium than microbes are, thus they need more nutrients and growth hormones. But because to developments in culture medium, it is now feasible to cultivate both differentiated and undifferentiated cells on synthetic medium. Animal cell cultures may be created using a variety of cell types and complicated organs can also be employed to start in vitro organ cultivation. Cells, tissues or organs can all be employed in a culture process, depending on the technique's initial purpose. Let's go through into the types of animal cell culture. Depending on how many cell divisions occur during the procedure, animal cell cultures may be split into two main categories. Number 1. Primary cell culture and Number 2. Secondary cell culture. Let's understand what is primary cell culture. Primary cell culture is the initial culture made directly from animal tissue using enzymatic, chemical or mechanic means of disintegration. The primary cell culture cells develop slowly and retain all the properties of the original tissue or cells. These cultures have the same number of chromosomes as the original cells since they have taken straight from the source. To retain and sustain the development of cells on an artificial growth medium at a certain condition, primary cell cultures are carried out. To create new cultures that either expand endlessly or stop growing after a few subcultures, primary cell cultures can be subcultivated. Following primary cell culture, cell lines may be created as a result of introduction of mutations into the cells. The morphology of cells in primary cell culture may vary with epithelium, epithelioid, fibroblast and connective tissue type morphological structure being the most often seen ones. Primary cell cultures are hard to get by and most often last less time. Additionally, these are vulnerable to virus and bacterium infestations. The main cell cultures rise in cell density may cause the substrate and nutrients to become depleted which will have an impact on cellular activity. Once they reach the confluence stage, primary cell culture often need to be subcultured in order to maintain ongoing cell development. Depending on the types of cells present in the culture, primary cell cultures can be further split into two classes. First one is encourage dependent adherent cells. For adhesion and proliferation, the cells in the culture need a solid physiological inert surface. Given that these cells are challenging to 
cultivated cell suspensions, the surface should be stable and non-toxic. Typically, these cells are extracted from organ tissues where they stay immobilized within the connective tissue. Kidney cells and mouse fibroblast STO cells are example of adherent cells. Second is Anchorage independent which is suspension cells. These cells do not need a firm surface to adhere to and can proliferate effectively in cell suspensions. To create new subcultures, they can be continually developed on liquid media. Since cells that remain in suspension inside the body are useful suspension cells, the capacity of cells to proliferate in suspension depends on the source of cells. Blood cells that are vascular and remain suspended in the plasma are one example of suspension cells. Second comes the secondary cell culture. After the main cell cultures are subcultured over time in new culture medium, secondary cell cultures are produced. The secondary cell culture cells have a long lifespan because they have access to the right nutrients at regular intervals which gives them a longer lifespan. Since secondary cell cultures are easier to cultivate and preserve, they are preferred over primary cell cultures. These are created by enzymatically treating adherent cells, washing them and then resuspending them in specific quantities of new medium. When the primary cells contain more cells than the medium can sustain for growth, secondary cell cultures are created. Secondary cultures aid in preserving the ideal cell density required for sustained development. Because of mutations and genetic modifications that might be introduced during the subculture process, the cells of secondary line cell culture could not resemble those on the model tissue. The cells may change because persistent culturing can occasionally produce immortal cells. As the cells undergo transformation and have a lower susceptibility to infections, the danger of contamination by bacteria and viruses decreases. The possibility that the cells can develop a propensity to differentiate over an extended period of time and produce abnormal cells is a significant drawback of secondary cell culture. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to it. Now let's understand what is cell lines. A cell line is a collection of cells that develop from a primary culture that is made up entirely of one kind of cell. Although the genotype and phenotype of the cells can be changed, cell lines often exhibit functional characteristics that are similar to those of primary cells. Multiple cell lineage with the same or diverse traits make up a cell line. Depending on how the cells develop, cell lines may further split into two types. Number one is finite cell lines. Number two is continuous cell lines. Let's understand finite cell lines. Finite cell lines are cell lines in which the cultured cells proliferate just a finite number of times before ultimately dying. Before they inevitably die and are no longer able to divide, the cells in the limited cell lines can divide somewhere between 20 and 100 times. Cell lineage, difference, species, cell conditions and media are only a few of the variables that affect the number of cell divisions and longevity. Cell lines of the finite cell lines develop on solid surfaces as adherent cells. Number two. Continuous cell lines Continuous cell lines are those that continue to develop throughout time through further subcultures. The cells in the continuous cell lines multiply more quickly to create a distinct culture. The cells may divide endlessly and are immortal. The cells in continuous cell lines are both tumorigenic and susceptible to genetic transformation. After being exposed to chemical carcinogens or becoming infected with oncogenic viruses, normal primary cell cultures give rise to altered cells. The cells can develop as suspensions on liquid medium and can proliferate to reach larger cell densities. On the culture vessels, these cells can even grow on top of one another to create multi-layered structures. Now let's see few examples of common cell lines. 
The following list includes some typical example of cell lines. Number 1. Hella cell line. Number 2. HL60 leukemia. Number 3. MCF7 breast cancer cells. Let me give you a brief on Hella cell lines. With the aid of cervical cancer cells, Hella cell lines are one of the first human cell lines to be continuously cultured. These cells are utilized in procedures including preclinical drug testing and virus culture. Whereas HL60 is a cancer of the blood forming tissue which is the bone marrow and is caused due to a non-inherited mutation in the PML gene. The HL60 cell line is a human leukemia cell line that has been used for laboratory research on blood cell formation and physiology. HL60 proliferates continuously in suspension culture in nutrient and antibiotic chemicals. MCF7 It is a human breast cancer cell line with estrogen, progesterone and glucocorticoid receptors. These cell lines are estrogen responsive and are often used in vitro to study estrogen receptor positive breast cancers. Despite their genomic instability, the sheer amount of existing literature makes MCF7 cells a useful model to understand estrogen receptor and breast cancer biology. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing. Now let's dive into the procedure or protocol of animal cell culture. Number 1. Growth Conditions Number 2. Primary Cell Culture Number 3. Cell Taunting And Number 4. Treptonizing Cells Number 1. Growth Conditions The use of particular culture medium that are more complicated and focused than the fundamental culture medium used for microbial growth is necessary for animal cell culture. Inorganic salts, nitrogen sources, energy sources, vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, growth factors, and hormones are few of the crucial fundamental elements of the media. Antibiotics and pH buffering devices are occasionally also included because various species require different temperatures for cell growth and division, the growth temperature will vary depending on the origin of the cell. Whole-blooded animals grow between 15 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius and warm-blooded animal cells may be cultivated at 37 degrees Celsius as the ideal temperature. Number 2. Primary Cell Culture Fresh tissues are taken from organs using an aseptic razor and these tissues are then used to create primary cell cultures. In other instances, proleutic enzymes or chemical disintegrators are used to remove the cells. To get rid of proteolytic enzymes, perfing liquids is used to wash the resulting cell suspension. The cell suspension is put onto a flat surface such as a sterile petri plate or a culture dish. An adequate culture medium is applied of the cells that may attach to the vessel space and they are then incubated at room temperature. Number 3. Cell Taunting the conserved cell culture may need to be employed in successive subcultures. The growth medium where the cells are to be placed is warmed and the water bath is heated to a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. The culture vessel is filled with the heated media. The frozen cells in the vial are then taunt in the water bath. The vial is cleaned on the exterior with 70% alcohol after defrosting. After being pipetted into the cell culture vessels, the cell suspension is gently stirred to combine everything. After that, the medium is incubated for an overnight period under the normal growth conditions. Next day, the growing media is changed. Number 4. Trepanizing Cells Proteolytic enzymes are used in the trepanization process to remove adherent cells from the surface of the culture medium. When the cells will be employed for passing through, counting or other operations, it is done. The cells are retrieved once the media has been taken out. Phosphate buffer is then used to wash the cells. The jar is then filled with warm trypsin EDTA to 
cover the mono layer. To make sure that the mono layer is coated, the jar can be shaken. For 1 to 3 minutes, the vessel is heated to 37 degrees Celsius in a carbon dioxide incubator. The flask is forcefully tapped on the side with the palm of the hand to aid in separation once the vessel has been taken from the incubator. Don't forget to give a like to this video. Applications of Animal Cell Culture There are several uses of animal cell culture which includes production of vaccine, recombination proteins, gene therapy, model systems, cancer research, production of biopesticides. Number 1. Production of vaccines An essential method for the generation of viral vaccines is animal cell culture. The method has been applied to the creation of recombinant vaccines for poliovirus and hepatitis B. Viral vaccines are produced on a big scale or commercially using immortalized cell lines. Number 2. Recombinant proteins Recombinant therapeutic proteins such as cytokines, hematopoietic growth factors, growth factors, hormones, blood products and enzymes can also be produced using animal cell cultures. Baby hamster kidney and CHO cells are two of the most popular animal cell lines utilized for the synthesis of these proteins. Number 3. Gene Therapy The advancement in gene therapy depend heavily on the development of animal cell culture. To correct these flaws and cure illnesses, cells with dysfunctional genes can be replaced by ones that operate. Number 4. Model Systems Cells grown by the cell cultures can be used as a model system for research into the biology of cells, host pathogen interactions, medicational effects and effects brought on by changes in the composition of the cells. Number 5. Cancer Research Since cancer cells can also be cultivated, animal cells can be utilized to explore distinctions between cancer cells and normal cells. The variation enables more thorough investigation of the probable origins and outcomes of various carcinogenic chemicals. Certain chemicals Viruses and radiation can also be used to cultivate normal cells into cancer cells. Studies on the effectiveness of cancer treatment methods and medications can also be conducted using cancer cells as test subjects. Lastly, production of biopesticides. Animal cells like SF21 and SF9 can be used for the production of biopesticides due to their fast growth rate and higher cell density. Organisms like baculovirus can be produced through animal cell culture as well. Now let's dive into the advantages of animal cell culture. The following are some of the benefits of using animal cell in culture. Because it enables the manipulation of many physiological and physiobiological parameters including temperature, pH and osmotic pressure, cell culture is preferable to other comparable biotechnological procedures. Number 2. Study on cell metabolism and the understanding of cell biochemistry are made possible by animal cell culture. Number 3. Additionally, it enables the examination of how various substances including the proteins and medications affect diverse cell types. Number 4. If only one cell is employed, animal cell culture findings are consistently reproducible. Number 5. The method also makes it possible to distinguish between various cell types based on the presence of markers like molecules or through cryotyping. Number 6. Animals are not used in studies thanks to the utilization of animal cells in the testing and other procedures. And lastly, number 7. Animal cell culture may be utilized to produce huge amounts of proteins and antibodies without the need for a significant financial outlay. Let's look into the disadvantages of animal cell culture. Number 1. Animal cell culture has been employed as a cutting-edge technique although there are certain drawbacks to this methodology. Number 2. It is a specialist approach that calls for aseptic settings and skilled staff. Due to the pricey equipment needed, the procedure is costly operation. Number 3. 
the cell culture's second subculture might produce distinct characteristics from the initial strain. Number four, the approach only yields a negligible quantity of recombinant proteins, which pushes up the cost of procedure. Number five, mycoplasma contamination and viral infections are common and challenging to diagnose and cure. And lastly, number six, because of the prevalence of aneuploid chromosomal makeup, the cells produced during this method are unstable. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching till the end.